Hello, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and I'm excited and happy to be talking about Rich Dad's World, but more about real financial education. Because as most of you know, our schools teach us nothing about money. And um, a very important part about money is a subject called taxes. And since we don't study money at school, if you really studied it, you would find out that for money to exist, taxes have got to exist. And um, I'm going to say some things today that'll disturb some of your true blue patriots out there who think that paying taxes is patriotic. That is the biggest lie told to people. That when people look at the real formation of the United States of America, it was really founded in 1773 with the Boston Tea Party, which was a tax revolt. And uh, if you look at it from that point of view, what I'll say, what I'm going to say, and my, uh, my advisor and my educator on taxes, my mentor is Tom Wheelwright. So if you have real red, white, and blue blood cursing through your veins and you think paying taxes is patriotic, your blood may turn cold right now because you've been lied to. So anyway, a uh, quick history here. Um, taxes can only exist unless there's debt and the US dollar is debt. And the way they pay get the money back is via taxes. And so a true capitalist, and I just finished this book here. If we ever get some paper to print it, it's called The Capitalist Manifesto. And it talks a lot about taxes because real capitalists don't pay taxes. And so it's gonna be an interesting program. This is Rich Dad's World. We don't want you to do anything illegal because you don't, because you don't if you know what you're talking about. But as you know, I'll say it again and I say it again. Our school system teaches us nothing about money. And if you really want to understand money, you must understand debt and taxes. Because in 1913, the Federal Reserve Bank was created. The Federal Reserve Bank is not federal. It has no reserves and it's not a bank. And also what was created was the 16th Amendment. And the 16th Amendment allowed there to be taxation. So when you look at history, you'll see 1913 was a pivotal year. So all you red, white, and blue communists out there who think that paying taxes is patriotic, you know, get my book here, The Capitalist Manifesto, because what I'm going to say today will make some of you go nuts because I make millions and millions and millions of dollars and pay no taxes. And when you understand that, I do it legally. So if you really want to have an education about money and finance and financial education, it's about debt and taxes. So with that, my guest today is my personal tax advisor. He's my educator. He's my mentor. And he's my go-to guy before I do anything because I refuse to pay taxes legally. And you don't have to pay taxes if you have a great advisor like Tom Wheelwright, who is my advisor. So Tom, welcome to the Rich Dad World Program. Thanks, Robert. It's always good to be here, always good to be with you, and always good to be talking about taxes and how to be patriotic and not pay taxes instead of being patriotic and paying taxes. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, it really is, because the reality is for some people to be patriotic, they have to pay taxes. The, you know, the, the E and the S, pretty much they have to pay taxes if you're an employee, self-employed, superstar. Um, if you're going to be patriotic, you do have to pay taxes. But you're just, a, you're just being a silent partner uh, with the government, basically, whereas if you're, you know, like, like the rich, like you, Robert, if you're really contributing the most to the economy and the most to what the government wants done, you actually end up paying little to no tax because the tax incentives overwhelm the amount of tax that you'd pay otherwise. Correct. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a 10 Roberts free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Go to richdadfree.com.
So let me show you this. This this here is book number two in the Rich Dad series. It's called the Cash Flow Quadrant. So E stands for employees. So you go to school, they tell you go to school, get a job. But if you're really smart like Tom, you become, S stands for super smart. You become accountants, attorneys, and doctors. So Tom, who pays the most taxes of these characters here? Oh, that, definitely the S, definitely the super smart. The, 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 the more degrees you have, the more tax you pay. <laughs> it's, thank God you, most of your friends, Tom, are like me, C students. <laughs> we, we didn't qualify for this one here. Uh, that's for sure. You educate all of us oh, that as a general rule, and this is worldwide too, this is not just US. Right. And so Tom and I have traveled the world and employees pay about 40% in taxes. That's Anything right. to say about that? I mean, that's worldwide. That, that is, that's a, that's a pretty standard rate worldwide. It's going to be anywhere from 30 to 50%, but on average 40%, if you make any kind of decent wage, you're going to be up in that 40% range. Correct. And if you're a doctor, lawyer, self-employed, or like somebody says, I'm going to quit my job and start my own business, you become a small business owner or a specialist. I'm going to be a web designer. How much of these guys pay in taxes here? Well, they, they can get all the way up to 60% in tax because they're paying not just the employee's share, they're paying the employer's share as well. So they pay two taxes, employer and employee. So that's what happens when people quit their job and start their own business without talking to Tom first. Okay, so big B stands for big business, which is according to the tax code, 500 employees. But B also stands for brand. Right. And most people don't build a brand here. So big business, like the big corporations, how much do they pay? Uh, typically around 20%. 20%. And again, what Tom instructs people, advises people, it's because we're doing what the government wants done. So why would the government give a tax break to big business? Well, because biz that's where the jobs are, right? So one of the government's primary goals is to create jobs and employment. And so the big business doesn't pay the taxes. In the B quadrant, it's the E people who work for the big business who pay the taxes. Right. The government needs people to hire these people here. Correct. And so if you hire a lot of people, they'll give you a tax break for that. And then I stands for investor, but it's an inside investor. In other words, over here, lots of people invest, but they invest in a 401k or an IRA. They invest in public market, like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, which I don't, I don't have any of those things. I don't want them. But over here is an insider or investor. How much do they pay? Well, they, they, they're the ones who get down to zero and pay zero tax. So if you enjoy being over here, you can tune out right now. But if you want to find out how to get over here, this is your program, especially here, which does world. And they'll explain to you how you can get over to this side here because you can do it legally. And this is a funny thing that Tom and I talk about. Who cheats the most on taxes, Tom? Oh, uh, absolutely the S. These guys S quadrant. The most. Mm -hmm. They're the biggest crooks. Every time I go into a small, you know, a sole proprietor or something like this, and they said, if you pay cash, we'll give you a break. When they say, well, you pay cash, what does that mean, Tom? They're saying they're not going to report that to the government. How else do these guys cheat? Well, you know, they take deductions for um, all their personal expenses. They, uh, they, they don't record uh, their, in, their information properly on their books. Some of them have two sets of books, one for the, one for the tax man and one, and one for themselves. So it's, it's just, a, you know, that's what they do because they don't know any better. And that's what Al Capone did, didn't he? That's how he got caught. <laughs> so the biggest crooks are on this side here. No, this side. And the legal guys are on this side here. So Tom, would you mind giving us a little, a little of your background? What qualifies you to say such blasphemous things? <laughs> sure. So uh, 
after growing up in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, and, and being a, a Mormon missionary in Paris, uh, learning how to get rejected in French, I spent uh, a couple of years at the University of Utah with, to get my undergraduate degree in accounting, and another couple of years at the University of Texas to get my master's degree in accounting, specializing in tax. And I spent seven years with Ernst & Young, one of the largest CPA firms in the world, three years in their national tax department. I spent four years as the in-house tax advisor for a Fortune 1000 company, 14 years as an adjunct professor in the Masters of Tax program at Arizona State University, 25 years buying, building, selling CPA firms, and um, now run a network of CPA firms around the world. So I, I've, I've been around the block a few times, Robert, and you and I have been around the block a few times together, frankly. And it's really funny because we travel all over Asia, America, Europe, uh, Africa, and everybody comes up to us, no matter which country we're in, and this is pretty universal. Okay, these guys are capitalists, and these guys work for money here. Right. You know, I'll give you a definition for a capitalist. A capitalist commodifies labor. Mm. I'll say it again. A capitalist commodifies labor. So a capitalist will hire employees or hire accountants and attorneys and make money off of them. That's right. And that's why they get the tax breaks. But no matter where we are in the world, at the end of every event, people come up to you and say, what? You can't, uh, it's great information. You just can't do that here. <laughs> no matter where we are. Doesn't matter. We'll be in California and they say. You can't do that here. We'll be in South Africa and they'll say. You can't do that here. We're in uh, Moscow. What do they say? <laughs> you can't do that here. It's so really funny. And Tom breaks out because Tom's an A student. I'm a C student. Tom breaks out the code and shows them in Russian. This is where it says you can do it. <clears throat> they still can't believe it. The funniest one was when we were in Russia with uh, with with all of those uh, uh, really um, rich, really rich entrepreneurs, um, and they're all going along around saying how they cheated until the one guy goes, "Yeah, I don't pay any tax. I don't cheat at all. This is how I do it, and it's it's completely legal." And so we're going, "Yeah, exactly. That's how you do it here." Yeah. It was, it's really interesting. It's I hear that wherever we are in the world, people come up to Tom and say, well, that'll work there, but it won't work here. Right. And the place it doesn't work is inside the brains here. You're going to be finding out how you can legally come onto this side here. Legally. You don't have to cheat. These are the tax cheats here. This is Al Capone and gang here. This is the guy that's stuffing cash in his pocket. This is the guy at the swap meet dealing only in cash. It's the guy doing the cryptocurrency and not yeah. reporting it. Yep. Yeah. Learn how to come over here legally. Because as I say, I don't want to go to jail and do the hula for some guy. You know what I mean? I just have no interest in doing that. And actually, once I understand th this side, it's more fun. Oh, yeah. It's, it's so much more fun. I mean, I look at investments completely differently. Or if I get something new, I'll ask Tom first so I can see what Tom sees. Is that true, Tom? I mean, there's so many different ways the government wants you to not pay tax. Well, for, for sure, anything the government wants done, there's a tax incentive for it. So if they want solar energy, there's a tax incentive. If they want electric cars, there's a tax incentive. They, they want uh, agriculture. I've never yet met a farmer who paid taxes. OK, they, they, this is just all tax incentives. So you, you just have to look at where do I want to invest and how do I do it in such a way that I don't pay taxes because I'm doing it the way the government wants me to do it and not doing it the way I want to do it. Now, on the bright side, though, Tom, um, my cell just hit two oil wells. I was, I, was, I was being paid $50 a barrel, and he hit two oil wells, one in Louisiana, one in North Dakota, the Bakken pumping out 800,000 barrels of oil and oil went from $50 to $100 a barrel. The rich got richer, didn't they? For sure. For sure. And, and when you invested in that, you got tax breaks. Yeah. And I pay no tax on that. 
So understand that's why Tom is valuable. So everybody's crying. I, I feel sorry for the poor middle class because the first thing that happens is food prices go up because oil provides fertilizer and trucks to carry the things to market and gasoline. I, I just can't believe what's happening to this country. On the other side though, I'm making more money and paying less taxes. So Tom, how am I paying less taxes and making more money if I drill for oil versus if I invest in an oil company? You know, let's say I invest in Exxon versus I drill for oil as an entrepreneur. What's the difference in taxes? Well, it, it's, it's really looking at what does the government want. So if you invest in Exxon, you're, you're not doing anything to produce additional oil. You're just trading in a in a paper asset, right? Just trading in security. So you're not actually drilling for oil when you invest in Exxon. But if you actually drill for oil, like you do with Mike, then the government says, well, if you actually drill for oil, then we're going to let you write off 100% of your investment in the year that you drill for the oil. So we're going to, we're going to contribute 40 to 50% of the, of the initial investment and, uh, and what's even great in oil is, and we're not even going to take 40 or 50% when it produces, we're going to take only 85% of that. So you get actually oil is the only place you get a benefit, both going in and coming out. We'll be right back. If you're concerned about high inflation, looming recession, a stock market correction, or out of control spending in Washington, this is an important message to hear. Because the fact is, during every major crisis in U.S. history, many of those who fail to prepare watch their savings, investments, or retirement funds go down, while many with the foresight to own gold help preserve their purchasing power. Gold even made some folks richer. Now we're facing several major crises at once, and experts say we may soon face even more economic trouble. So please don't wait. Learn the simple way you can diversify with gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind, even in uncertain times. The new free 2023 Gold Guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com slash Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Find out why and visit freegoldguide.com slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Don't miss your only chance to attend a Robert Kiyosaki event in 2023. This is the first official Rich Dad event hosted in 13 years. Learn exactly what to invest in to grow your wealth and protect it from our socialist government. Learn Robert's top five investments that he is doing right now, which are safe from the government's plan to rapidly kill our money. Learn from Robert's actual partners who are real investors, capitalists, and entrepreneurs. Robert will disclose everything he's doing to prepare you for these uncertain times. Reserve your space for the only live Rich Dad seminar in 2023. And the event is called Rich Entrepreneur, Poor Entrepreneur. It's your April 6th, 7th, and 8th in Scottsdale, Arizona. So when President Biden got, took office and cut off the Keystone XL pipeline, but America's getting met the capitalist, you know, these guys here, the people on the B and the I side are getting richer and richer and richer and richer and richer. Okay. And a lot of these people are Chinese and English because the rich invest on this side. They can invest in America just like anybody else can. But these guys here with our 401k cannot. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. Is that true, Doc? No, it is. It is. They, they, they actually are not even allowed to invest, right. uh, uh, you know, in, in some of the oil deals because the oil deals require a certain level of income or a certain level of, of wealth. So the, the rich get richer. And so to understand debt and taxes as being a capitalist, right, Tom? No, for sure. For sure. Well, what, what's great about what you do, Robert, is that the more, the, the fewer taxes you pay, the more money you make. And not just because you don't pay taxes, because, because what you're investing in produces more, uh, more wealth, more revenue, uh, more cash flow than anything you can invest in in the stock market. Yeah. 
And my friend Dave Ramsey also says, live debt free. Tom, am I deeply in debt? Uh, very deeply in debt. Why? Taxes. It's tax free money. It, and not only is it tax free money, but you're, you're not just leveraging up your investment returns, you're leveraging up your tax benefits. So you get, more, you get all the tax benefits that the bank doesn't get. <laughs> you get to use the bank's money for tax benefits. It's awesome. And what's really interesting, because I, I invest with Kenny McElroy in real estate. So let's say he buys a building for a million to keep the numbers simple. He increases the rent so that he refinances the building at 2 million. So we have a million in debt. He borrows out another million. We now have two million in debt, and I get the he and I get the million dollars extra. How much in tax do we pay for that extra million? Zero. Zero. And who pays the debt? The tenants. The tenants. Rich Dad's World teaches capitalism. So I'll read you something because this comes from this book here, The Capitalist Manifesto. Because years ago, 1965, I read this book here, The Communist Manifesto by Marx. And Marx was just like my poor dad, an academic. And the trouble with academics is they're poor. They have no idea how capitalism works. So stay tuned to this program to find out how capitalism works. So once you understood this, I understood my rich dad, why he did things the way he did. And my poor dad, hated my rich dad. My rich dad was my best friend's father. And a rich dad had all these houses and he paid no taxes and he owned hotels. He was playing Monopoly and rich dad paid no taxes. And my poor dad being a communist, but didn't know it, he hated the rich. And that's what Marx did. Marx hated the rich. But I wanna read you a quote from Marx. So all of you who believe that paying taxes is patriotic, this comes from this book here, The Capitalist Manifesto. And this book here, The Communist Manifesto, it says here, a heavy or progressive or graduated income tax is necessary for the proper development of communism. I may read it again to you. This is Marx's words. If you want to verify, just read this book here, okay? It says, a heavy or progressive or graduated income tax is necessary for the pro proper development of communism. And that's what's happening in America. So if you want to be a communist, you stay on this side here. You want to be a capitalist, you come to this side here. And again, Rich Dad's World offers you opportunities to understand this side, not this side here. So anyway, that's why I, that's why Tom is one of my go-to guys. Because the less tax I pay, the more capitalistic I become. That's right. The freer I become. Any comments on that, Tom? Well, yeah, because, I mean, part of freedom is being free from the government, right? Being free from doing what the government requires you to do. So you can, you can invest in a 401k and pay lower taxes, but you're, you're subject to all the restrictions on how you invest, when you invest, how much you invest, when you take the money out, how you're being taxed. All of that is subject to restrictions. What you do, Robert, doesn't have any restrictions, so you can invest the way you want to invest, when you want to invest, you can use the money you way you want to. And as long as you, again, follow, you know, the, <laughs> the pattern that's in the tax law, you're never going to pay tax. Right. And do I have a 401k or IRA, Tom? <laughs> no. Would you advise me to have one? No, it would make absolutely no sense for you. Yeah, because I'm a capitalist. So anyway, with that said, you can still fight back by making, getting rich, not paying any taxes legally. So Tom, what are, what are tax codes? You, you call them incentives, but what do you mean by incentives? Well, so, so really there's only one line in the tax law that raises revenue. It says all incomes taxable, unless we say it isn't. And there's another line that says nothing's deductible unless we say it is. And then there's charts and tables to tell you how much tax, take, tax to pay. But there's 6,000 pages of tax law and 99.9% .9 is an instruction guide, a roadmap, if you will, to reducing your taxes, saying, look, if you do this, 
then you get this tax benefit. If you invest in oil, you get this tax benefit. If you invest in solar, you get this tax benefit. If you get, if you invest in housing, you get this tax benefit. If you invest in jobs, you get this tax benefit. So it's all these tax benefits. The reality is, so here's another thing interesting, uh, Robert, is that the government actually makes really good money on these incentives. So this isn't a one-way street. It's not just the taxpayer who does well with these incentives. The government gives the incentives not just for social policy, but also because they actually make a return on investment. I mean, they are your partner. So they do get revenue back, okay? And they do really well. It's, uh, Robert, I did a, I actually, in my new book, I talk about what happens with an IRA or 401k. The only investment that the government supports that it doesn't get a good return on is an IRA 401k. Yeah. And that's because Wall Street gets rich. That's right. And if you remember something, the Federal Reserve Bank is there to do one thing, protect the banks. So when Biden took out the Keystone XL pipeline, I'm an oil guy. I went to school. I, I worked for Standard Oil. I drill for oil. When he did that, I said, he just screwed America. Because when the price of oil goes up, the poor get poor because they can't afford to live. So they try and raise their prices. You know, I want 15 bucks an hour. Not that it's going to save them because they just pay more tax. And then the middle class has a harder time because they're paying more tax also. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you go to a school like my poor dad. My poor dad was head of education for the state of Hawaii. Very good man, but I hate to say this. He was a Marxist. And in 1965, when I went to the academy, I read this book here. It was eye-opening. So anyway, that's why I, uh, I speak and I teach. The way to fight back against Marxism is financial education, because that's what Marx did not understand. When I read Marx's background, he was just like my poor dad, very intelligent man, highly academic, hated the rich, just like my poor dad hated my rich dad. It's a classic case of Marxist versus, or a communist versus a capitalist. So what Tom and I are, are capitalists. Would you say that's true, Tom? Absolutely. And just remember this one definition of a capitalist, a capitalist will teach somebody to fish. A Marxist will give people fish. Very, very big difference there. You can become a capitalist make more money and pay less taxes legally. And the good thing is, as I started this whole program, this is not just in America. It's all over the world, right, Tom? Everywhere, everywhere we've been, Robert. Everywhere, but they'll never teach you that. And if your friends are academic types, they'll say, well, that's, you're, you're a crook, you can't do that. Is that right, Tom? No, that's exactly what they say, that that to, to not pay tax means that you're bad. It means that you're cheating. It means you're doing, no, it just means that you're doing what the government wants done and you understand how the tax law really works and is meant to work. Yeah, and this is book number two, the cash flow quadrant. These are the guys that cheat. Why do they cheat? Because they have to cheat. <laughs> do they have much escape, Tom? Well, the E quadrant has no escape. They have no escape. IRA, 401k, that's, that's the best they're going to do. The S quadrant, they have, they, they do. Actually, if they were to learn to do what the B quadrant did, they can do everything the B quadrant does. They just choose, that's a financial education issue. So being in the S and acting like an S is a financial education issue. You can be a small business and act like a big business and you get the same benefits. Yeah. An interesting thing is these guys here can do this. They can if they have a good attorney also, right? Right. So that's why I have Garrett Sutton and he's, he's our attorney. But you have to act like these people, you can't act like these people. That's right. Is that correct? No, it's exactly true. If you, if you behave like the B in the I, you get the same benefits as the B in the I. You don't have to be huge to do right. it. You can shift your thinking over to this side here and do it legally. Like I said, you know, I'm from Hawaii. I didn't want to go to jail and dance to hula for some other guy. You know what I mean? I just don't want to do that. And it's more fun because once I understood what Tom was saying as my guide through this process, I make more money. I have more fun. I have more freedom. It's just incredible. 
So Tom, would you explain what you mean with tax code? How many pages of tax code are there? About 6,000. Have you read them? I have multiple times. <laughs> I can't wait to start. <laughs> I'll let Tom read them for me. <laughs> but it, anyway, what does incentive mean? Uh, in, incentive just means we'll give you a push, right? So we'll give you uh, um, some type of a financial benefit through taxes and in exchange for doing what we want to have done. So um, it, it's just we're encouraging you to do what we want to get done because the government uh, gets to leverage, you know, just like you were talking about leverage with the bank, the government is leveraging those tax incentives because for a dollar of tax benefits, they can get $10 in return of uh, production. And they can't do that if they spend the money themselves. So uh, capitalism, uh, capitalism is very inexpensive for the government. Communism is extraordinarily expensive for the government. Because you have to take care of people. Whereas what capitalism does, capitalism gave the poor and the middle class a chance to rise up. It was the American dream. So capitalism, even if you're poor, even if you have nothing, even if you didn't go to school, you can be any race, any gender, you can still become rich. That's capitalism, right? But what yeah, happened, it, huh, go ahead. Capitalism gives everybody a way out. So with that said, so we fight back with education. If you want to be a capitalist, and a freedom fighter throughout the world. It's not just America. I would understand what Tom does because we fight, we fight for our freedom. Yeah, so, so you were talking about inflation and how you pay more tax because you get a higher wage, but you also get higher up in that progressive tax rate structure. So again, communism at work or that progressive tax rate structure at work, inflation actually pushes you up higher. So not only do you pay more tax, you pay a higher proportion of your income in taxes. And so that's just another type of inflation that is hitting the middle class. And, and so you know, there's never been a time when edu financial education was more important than right now. And when, when inflation's that high, you can't be paying high taxes. You can't be making 3% on your money. You've got to do it a different way. And the only way is through financial education. Right, so I'll read it again. A heavy, or as Tom said, progressive. Oh, I'm making $15 an hour now. Will they pay more tax or less tax, Tom? More. And what happens to our national debt? It keeps, it keeps going up. Yeah. That's why they have to keep doing this. And that's why our school system has no financial education in it. That's why I use debt, because debt is tax-free. If I don't borrow money, no money is created, because money is created out of debt. And so I get tax incentives for being in debt. But yet guys like Dave Ramsey, he's a good guy, he's a friend of mine. And his, his advice is good for the average person with no financial education. Live debt free. It's good advice, right, Tom? Absolutely. You should live debt free if you're an idiot. But if you're a capitalist, you want as much debt as you possibly get legally, right, Tom? Absolutely. <laughs> um, the, the more debt you have, the less tax you pay. Yep. And, and last, <laughs> this is a funny thing. Kenny, who does our real estate for us, he did a refinance, gave me a check for $2 million out of a refinance. In other words, apartment house went up. We borrowed out the equity that was appreciated because we raised our rents and all this. So that, is that $2 million tax-free? Yes, completely tax-free. And you know where that money went? Into a gold mine. <laughs> So I bought, the, I bought a partnership in the biggest gold mine in the world with tax-free money that came from my real estate. It's the way to do it. So with that said, the reason we have Rich Dad's World is if you want to find out how to come over here legally, and this is worldwide, you could be in Mexico, Korea, Canada, Europe, Africa, you can come here. But you do need the education to do it legally. Because Tom, it's not, you don't have to do it illegally, do you? you? You don't. And it's only difficult until you understand it. And once you understand it and get educated, it's not so difficult. Taxes actually support capitalism that, you know, that the government actually gets what they want. Taxpayers get what they want. 
everybody's better off and, and the poor and the middle class are lifted along with everybody else. So while the rich are getting richer, so are the poor and the middle class and they're getting opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise have. So I, I love having these discussions, Robert, thank you. But the poor middle class has to have the education. They do. You want to stay on this side here, the Marxist side, get a college education. You become an accountant or an attorney or a doctor. Think about this, a doctor makes a million dollars a year Pay six hundred thousand in taxes. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> but over here, as an inside investor, there's no stocks, no bonds, no mutual funds, no ETFs. I can pay zero, and that's why I need Tom for it. Thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you, everybody, for watching Rich Dad's World. <laughs>